Welcome to this tutorial showing you how to create a piece of work in response to the artist Tyler Spangler. As you can see, Tyler Spangler's work is very influenced by late 80s, early 90s aesthetic um, with vibrant colours mixed with surreal imagery. Um, very much reminds me of the type of thing I was wearing in the early 90s, unfortunately. Right, I have opened up a new document, A4 size, and I've already taken a photo of me holding an ice cream, in this case a Cornetto, it's all I had, um, and I have pre-prepared by removing the background and turning this image black and white. Um, I've also searched for grid PNG on Google, so I've got an empty background, and I've also search for lines png so that's got me some lines with an empty background okay i'm going to use the grid and the lines to help me do um, my background so i'm going to control c having masked that off go to my new project control v and i'm going to stretch that out in this instance it certainly doesn't matter that i'm squishing and stretching it to what I need and then I'm going to um, just zoom out um, because I'm then going to go to edit transform and distort and I'm going to grab those bottom corners and I'm going to pull them outwards to give that grid the feeling of receding into the distance so it becomes my the ground, if you will. And it looks like there's some perspective. Okay. And now I'm going to go and grab the... I can close that now, I don't need it. Grab the lines and then use the rectangular mask and control C. Go back to my project, control V. And in they go. Okay. And then I'll use the arrow tool, oops, just grab the right thing, there we go, to stretch these over. So they're creating the kind of sky, if you will. Okay. And I'm not too worried if I just overlap the ground for a second at the moment. What I'm going to do is go to Edit, Transform. And this time I'm going to go to warp. And as you might have seen me do in a previous video, this is going to grab the points um, and the handles around the edges of this image. And that's going to allow me to warp it. So the straight lines go into nice curves. I think that will do. Okay. And then this is when I'll just grab that and make sure that it's nicely aligned with each other and then I'm going to go to the background layer and I'm going to rectangular mask off the ground and go to color choose a nice yellow click OK and then I'm going to grab the paint bucket and I'm going to turn that yellow and I'm going to leave the sky white for now so next thing I'm going to do is start working on my hand with my ice cream. So rectangular marquee tool and select the whole thing. Control C and then Control V to paste that in. And just resize this. Remember to hold shift while you're doing resizing to keep it all the same shape without squishing it okay a little bit bigger okay now we need to turn our hand and ice cream cone into some nice cool colors so i'm going to choose a new layer and i'm going to make sure that layer is underneath the photo of my hand and i'm going to magic wand on the layer containing my hand and that's going to select everything around my hand with the ice cream. So I'm going to select inverse and that's going to select the hand and the ice cream. 
and I'm going to go to my new layer and I'm going to choose a color in this case a nice bright pink and then I'm going to fill that area I'm going to turn this invisible so you can see the fill okay and then turn that back on and I'm going to go to that top layer with my photo on it and I'm going to use the drop down menu and scroll down to multiply I think is what uh, works best yep okay and that turns my hand the color of the layer underneath it okay so that's an easy way of turning an image into a particular color okay so I'm going to do the same for the various things um, on the photo so the cone um, and my fingernails so I'll start with the cone and I'm going to be really quick for the purposes of the video but I would definitely advise you to be more careful as you go around your various parts but I'm um, going around the chocolate bit and the cone itself first obviously avoiding my fingers going round and down and then up again and then that double click and that masks off that area and as per before I make a new layer make sure that layer is below the photograph and it's still masked off so I just need to choose another color and I'm going to go with orange click OK and use the paint bucket to fill that and that's the same as before see I can remove the photo layer and show you that has filled that area okay now I'm going to go around the ice cream on the cone and same as before I would advise you to go a lot slower than I have but for the purposes of the video I'm going a bit quickly um, I don't need to worry about around it because it's empty around it um, choose a new layer drag that layer underneath as usual I think I'm going to go for a nice green ice cream and then paint bucket and then fill that area and now obviously you're thinking oh my god Nick it's gone over the background but don't worry it's all good if I magic wand around the ice cream on the photo layer and then go back to the green layer and press delete it gets rid of everything around it so all good there nice easy way of getting rid of background okay right fingernails same way we did it before um, polygonal lasso tool around the nails okay and you're going to be selecting multiple bits this time so when you've done one area you want to press shift on your first click of your next area don't then hold it you just want to press shift when you do your first click then you can just click and you'll see that the other fingernail is still highlighted okay same again press shift on your first click and then let go and go around the next nail and then the same with the last nail and once you're happy with all of those same as before new layer so you have a new layer and I'm going to go with a nice light blue click OK paint bucket and fill the fingernails and they all fill at the same time which is very handy okay and that is the end of the first part of this tutorial um, I look forward to seeing you back in part two